when I go to get, when I pay for my groceries at the market right now, I have to have my phone with me. I have to be able to unlock my phone. Um, I have a biometric safety layer, which is either your fingerprint, your face, or you have to have your passcode. Um, what else is there? Uh, so, so those are three levels of security that I think are better than any kind of security you have when you have your credit card. You take your credit card out and you push it into the, into the uh, card reader. Um, I'm sure that's secure, but when you're comparing contactless um, payment system to a credit card, if you feel comfortable with a credit card, it stands to reason that you would even feel more comfortable with the contactless payment system. So I'm trying to address people's um, very understandable concerns about is this is this is this safe? Is this me laying my phone and it looking in my face or my fingerprint is it safe? So that's kind of what real, when I thought about it and went through all the steps, I thought, wow, this is, yeah, this is pretty safe. And also you, our phones are end-to-end -end encrypted. So um, I think it's a pretty safe thing, just generally, I'm just doing an overview here. Um, and um, so um, how does this work? Um, we'll go through all the specifics. I have those in the notes. Um, but generally, you on your phone, you simply add your credit card or your debit card information to your digital wallet on your phone. And then um, your card is approved uh, because not all credit cards will go into Apple Wallet, but most do. So um, generally, like when I, I did my Citibank card, it, it went through without a snap. But I have talked to people that have had difficulty and it was because their particular card, uh, you needed to call the, the credit card company to verify that yes, you were setting up this Apple Pay system. Um, so, um, and, and, when you're actually shopping uh, and you can always ask the, the people in the store, do you accept, uh, I, I did this a lot this summer when I was buying sandwiches out and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so uh, you place your phone over the device and you will be prompted right away to double click on the side button. I've been wearing my mask in the store so I don't have my facial recognition. So it'll try to, up, try to read my face and then it will say, use passcode. And I'll say, yeah, use passcode and I'll type in my passcode and then it will go through. Um, so in theory, this whole thing makes it so that you have no contact. You're not handling bills. You, you're, you're not physically touching anything which makes some people uh, comfortable. Um, but some retailers and some stores will still ask you to sign, you know, one of those crazy, like where there's this screen and you sign with your tip of your finger. There are some um, merchant, merchants that still do that. Um, and then, and, and, and the, the next big question is, um, you know, are they secure? And, uh, there's a, and, and I always like to go back to that uh, time when um, I think it was Target that cyber criminals hacked into and they got all of the credit card information um, with uh, usernames and who, who charged what and they had credit card numbers and it was a really, it was a big deal. I think it was like about five years ago. Um, that, that cyber criminal stuff um, happens not through anything else other than the cyber criminals attack the target 
computer system. And there's not a whole lot we can do about that. Let's talk about Apple Wallet. Um, with Wallet, you can keep your credit cards, your debit cards, and your prepaid cards, store cards, boarding passes, movie tickets, coupons, reward cards, student IDs, and more in one place. And with Wallet, you can use passes on your iPhone to check in for flights, get and redeem rewards, get into movies, or redeem coupons. Now, not all vendors um, use Apple Wallet, but more and more do. I'm going to go tap into Wallet. And this is where you can see my cards. This is where the phone would walk you through adding your credit card. And a lot of credit cards will go right in and they will seamlessly be added to your wallet. Piece of cake, just, it just works perfectly. And you're just, oh, that was easy. It wasn't hard. But then there are some credit cards that will require you to call the number on the back of your credit card and verify that you are adding this credit card into Apple Wallet. And um, it usually is worth the time to do that. So that is how you add a credit card or a debit card. You can add a debit or credit card here a transit card, which we don't really have on Nantucket, but you could. Um, this is how you would do it. So one more time, you just go to wallet, open up wallet and click on the plus sign. I wanna figure this out. That's what I'm thinking. If it's not going in using your camera, using the camera thing, try to enter it manually, Suzanne. I think it's okay. Suzanne saying that. And, um, and then if that doesn't work, call up your credit card because it occurs to me that maybe they, they could send you, you know how credit card companies just, well, we can send you a new card. Maybe they could send you a new card that would work with the camera. But first try entering it manually. It's not hard. I mean, you just type in the number and you know your whatever, your birthday or expiration date and then the three digit number or the four digit security number. If you go to the internet and you type in what stores accept Apple Pay, you will see this huge list of mm. all the stores that accept Apple Pay. And, 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 um, and any charge card that you have for those stores will go into Apple Wallet. All right, so these are the things that my facial ID will work on. It'll unlock my phone. Um, it will unlock iTunes and the App Store. So it will auto, I have auto password fill turned on. So all mm -hmm. I need to do is, you know, it needs to see my face. And I have six other apps that use facial recognition. And these are, these are they. Oh, look at this. Wow. City, mobile, Costco, that's a credit card. So all these things will use my facial recognition, including Amazon. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Can you add some? Um, apps, well, look at, the, look at the bottom. Do you see this? Wow. Apps that have requested to use face ID for authentication will appear here. So the, what that means is that Zoom and Schwab and Costco and Amazon in their, from their end, they have, they have the ability to use Apple's facial recognition. And so I didn't have to do anything. Oh. They requested to use facial recognition. And I probably, I don't even really remember this, 
got like notification, like a little window, you know how they appear? Just, yep. Amazon would like to use your facial recognition. Is this okay? And I probably said, yes. With an iPhone 6 or later, there are two ways to use Apple Wallet. And um, uh, you can, oh, what they're talking about, what, what I mean is uh, you can put your passcode in or you can use your fingerprint with a six or later. On phones that are 10, um, it's called an iPhone X, which stands for 10 or later, you can use facial recognition and you can use, you can double click on the side button and that will also, you can also use Apple Wallet that way. So you can use Apple Wallet on a phone as old as a six, which is good to know. All right, so there is another way that you can pay using Apple Wallet. Um, and I want to show you um, this picture first before we go into the steps. So here is a screenshot of a chair that's for sale. And this is this, the um, button that you will see, buy with Apple Pay. Um, and so when you are shopping online, this looks almost like a Wayfair um, screenshot that this, this chair might have been on Wayfair. I'm not, yeah, and look at the price. It's $155, $156, must be Wayfair. So if you wanted to buy this chair uh, from uh, an online merchant, but you didn't want to give your credit card information to them, you didn't want to give your email address, you didn't want them, you didn't want Wayfair to have any information about you at all, you can buy it with Apple Pay. And what happens is you click on that button and all you have to set up Apple Pay. Um, but once you do that, all the information, the only information that Wayfair will get about you is kind of like a phony email address, a temporary email address and the credit card information it needs to pay for the chair. And Wayfarer essentially, Apple is kind of the middleman. And so Apple will forward any information that Wayfarer sends it to you, to your real email address. So, um, Wayfair will, you will not be bombarded theoretically with lots of ads from Wayfair and Wayfair would not have your permanent address. Back up and just let's, so this is Apple Wallet, pay within an app. Let's just read my notes here. So what you would do is you would tap on the Apple Pay button or choose Apple Pay as your payment method. And then check your billing, shipping and contact information to make sure that they're correct. If you want to pay with a different card, tap next to your card. So this is within Apple Wallet. If you need to enter your billing, shipping, and contact information on your iPhone or iPad, Apple Pay will store that information so you will never need, you will not need to do that again. Confirm the payment, and when your payment is successful, you'll see done with a check mark on the screen. So these are sort of the the step-by-step -step instructions that you would need to do that. But it's very intuitive and very easy. Report a transit transaction with the wrong merchant name or location. So if you had a problem, this is what you would do to correct the problem in Apple Wallet. I'm gonna show you Apple Wallet, but I just want while we're sharing this screen. Okay, let me show, let me change. Uh, I use City, that's my main one. So I'm gonna go here and you can see here are my transactions. So if you had any problem with any of these transactions, you can see it's, it's mainly stop and shop. That's all I do, that's where I go. Um, so you can see I on Sunday, I went to stop and shop. I used Apple Pay, 
I paid $27.10. Here's that little carrot. I'm gonna click on that carrot. Here's the status. It was approved. This is the name of my credit card. That was the amount. And it's as simple as if you have an issue, this is where you would report it right here. My finance folder. You can see I use Venmo. I use, the reason I use Ven, Venmo is different um, than what we were just talking about. Um, uh, the Apple Pay, and if you had an Android phone, um, you would be using Google Pay. Um, they are considered contactless payment methods, which is completely different and they work differently than peer-to-peer -peer payments. Um, Venmo is peer-to-peer. -peer. And kid, I mean, I, I heard about Venmo about five years ago or even more maybe when my son lived in um, Berkeley, California and they were all using Venmo and, and I started using it too. But it's a different kind of uh, payment method it uses different kinds of security. Um, and honestly, I, I mean, I do use it, but um, I don't understand it as thoroughly as um, uh, the, the uh, contactless payment methods. Um, so uh, when somebody sends you money, it, it's, um, they can use Venmo, you can use PayPal, which is also, it's not really a contactless payment. It's more like a peer-to-peer. -peer. It acts more like peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, and then there's this other thing called Apple Cash, which is kind of like a hybrid. So if I'm texting someone, I can pay them money with Apple Cash. Let me just show you that. So if I go to, but the other person has to have Apple Cash too. If I wanted to pay them, I would click on, I opened up Venmo. I would click on scan. It's not gonna scan anything. Payment cards and passes in wallet will not work automatically while Venmo is in use. Okay, good to know. Next, oh, I have to set this up. So I don't have um, a, a QR code to read right now, but you would line it up and then click on this button and, and then you would be uh, guided through different screens to pay the money for your produce that you're buying. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna click on back here. Um, or you can pay money this way. Um, class example. That'll really puzzle her. And then you can even, ooh, I even want to put a picture in. Maybe I'll add this little peanut. And then you can say, you can make sure it's private, which is what I like to do. Private is my default. You can make it public, visible to everyone on the internet, visible <laughs> to just your friends. And kids get into this or you can make it private, which is my default. And then I can request a dollar from my friend or I can pay my friend a dollar. So that that is Venmo. Um, Jenny, question, yeah. you have to have your friend's um, Venmo ID though, don't you? Yes, you do. Sometimes that I didn't, even if I did not have her Venmo ID, you can go in and search and type in their first name and last name. And, ah. and oftentimes it will appear. But, it, but you know, if I was going to pay you Pembroke, I would say, well, Pembroke, what is your, you know, here we are, we're talking. So what is your, um, what's your Venmo name? And it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's easy. And when, like for yard sales or, you know, when kids go out for pizza, I mean, I think this is why they liked it so much, you know, how, 
college kids go out for pizza and one person buys the pizza and everybody sends them like four dollars and fifty cents you know and it just it's a real easy way to um, pay babysitters and um, stuff like that yard sales and you'd be surprised at who actually has uses venmo a lot of people do 